Hi, John with eTrailer. If you're looking to add accessories to your Camry, like a bike rack or cargo carrier, or if you're even ready to do some light towing, then check out this option. This is the Curt Class 1 receiver hitch that we installed on our 2023 Toyota Camry. Let's take a closer look at the Curt hitch on the Camry here. First things first, we have a black gloss powder coat finish. This is a class one hitch. That means that the opening here is an inch and a quarter by inch and a quarter. It does have a reinforced collar. Um, as far as the chain hangers here, this is a loop style, which is going to be plenty of room for your standard S hooks if you're towing. And you can even fit some heavier duty clevis style in here as well. Now, if you are new to towing, you're going to need to know that the hitch does not come with a pin and clip. Now, the class one takes a half inch pin and clip. We have these available here at eTrailer if you need them. We also have some that uh, lock if you need more security. Now, if you're in the market for accessories like bike racks and cargo carriers, uh, just know that a lot of those accessories will already include a uh, pin and clip or an anti-rattle device. Now, speaking of accessories, let's get some measurements to help you decide um, if your existing accessories will work or if you're in the market for some. Um, this will help you determine what you need here. So from the ground to the top edge of the inside collar here, we are at 10 and a half inches. The other measurement we like to get is from the center of the pinhole to the outer edge of the bumper fascia here. And on the Camry, it's pretty close coming in at uh, two and a half inches. Now these numbers are important. Um, if you're going to be looking to do some towing, you're definitely going to want to get a ball mount that has a rise to it. Um, and even some of the accessories, these new Camrys sit kind of low, so you're definitely going to want to get an accessory that has a rise to it. Also, when they go up into the stowed position, you want to make sure that uh, when they're in the stowed position, they're not going to impact the back of the bumper. And with those measurements in mind, let's take a look at some of the capacities of this Class 1 hitch. As far as the tongue weight rating, the, the force pushing down on this hitch, uh, it can handle 200 pounds. And that's quite a bit if you're going to load up a cargo carrier or even a, a two-bike rack. You have plenty of room even if you have some e-bikes there. Um, if you are going to be doing some light-duty towing, we're looking at 2,000 pounds gross trailer weight rating. Now, that's going to be the weight of your trailer and then anything that you put in it or on it. Now you definitely want to check with your Toyota's manual to see what the tow rating is for your vehicle. So final thoughts on the Kurt hitch. I think uh, this hitch is a great option for you, especially um, if you're looking for a bike rack or something. Trying to get two bikes in the back of these cars nowadays is pretty rough. So, um, And even some light duty towing if you have either kayak carriers or anything like that. It's a great hitch. Um, it does have a hidden cross tube style on there. All you see is the receiver opening down here. So it kind of blends with the car. The cars are nice and aerodynamic nowadays and you don't always want an eyesore. They kind of blend in pretty good with the Camry. Now, as far as installation goes, um, it is a little bit involved. You need some special tools because there's gonna be some cutting and drilling underneath. There's no welding. It does bolt up, but there's just a few things that you that you need to know, and we can show you that step by step in the following video. Now, to begin our installation, it's going to be a good idea to get your Camry up off the ground. If you have some ramps uh, that you can back on or drive onto just to get some ground clearance, it's going to help you out a lot when you're installing this hitch. So, I'm going to take a cam buckle tie down strap, and I'm going to hook it on the coil springs under here on each side of the vehicle. Uh, this is going to help support the exhaust when we lower it down. That's going to be one of our first steps here. We need to get some clearance under here. So I've hooked it to the coil spring and I've just kind of cinched it up for right now. You can grab a 12 millimeter socket and on our car today we have dual exhaust. If you only have single exhaust then you just have to worry about the one side and then the middle. Today we have dual exhaust, 12 millimeter socket. On the tip of the exhaust right here, you're going to see the two 12 millimeter bolts that are holding the front or the rear isolator on. If you can't gain access to this, just push on your muffler a little bit and you can get the socket on there. So 
we'll have one on the rear and towards the front of the muffler here, we're gonna have another one. Again, 12 millimeter bolt, two of them. Now, if you have dual exhaust like we do today, do this on both sides. Now, once you have your mufflers unbolted, follow the exhaust pipe up to the middle here, and you're gonna see one more isolator. Uh, we're gonna spray this. I have silicone spray. Uh, you can just use soapy water if you like. That'll really help getting these off of here. And you can either use a pry bar. Most of the time, these aren't too bad on the Camrys. And it doesn't matter if you take the top one off or the bottom one, either or. And you can see the exhaust wanted to come down. This is why we have this strap here. Now, we need more room than this. So I'm gonna relax the exhaust a little bit and give us room to work. Next, you can take a 10 millimeter socket and come up to the inside of the heat shield above where the muffler is. You're gonna see two 10 millimeter nuts. You need to remove these. Again, if you have dual exhaust, do it on both sides. Now, we'll get this out of the way. And what that's gonna expose is our access points that we're gonna be using for the hitch. So we need to trim our heat shield so that this remains open. Now, as far as trimming this goes, um, you'll have some uh, diagrams in the directions that it'll tell you what the dimensions are that you need to cut. So this is actually the rear. This would be like towards the bumper side. And this heat shield's pretty thin sheet metal and it can cut easily with some tin snips. Definitely want to wear gloves doing this. Now we can test fit our heat shield to make sure it's going to give us access and this looks good. Now the directions want us to reinstall this heat shield right now um, but we have some work to do here and I think it's safer for our fingers if we just set it off to the side, get our work done and then we'll reinstall them. Now again, if you have dual exhaust, make sure you trim the heat shield on both sides. Now we can come to the middle of the car. We have a plastic pan under here that we need to remove. So starting at the back bumper, we're gonna have four push pin fasteners. I've just got a pick set here and we just pull out the middle and then the edge. And if we move our way in the middle here, these are 12 millimeter plastic flange nuts. You don't need um, really any power tools, just a 12 millimeter socket and these will come out for you. And if we move to the front of the pan, we're gonna have 10 millimeter. Now these are gonna be a little bit tighter than everything else, so you may have to get a socket and a wrench on here. These plastic fasteners are uh, a little weird sometimes. I'm putting downward pressure on them. Sometimes they don't really want to move much. So I'm not, I'm not really pulling very hard, just putting enough downward pressure on them to make sure that they're going to unthread. Okay. 
and we can set this off to the side. Now we can come over to the passenger side frame rail here and you're going to see the larger plastic plug here. To get that off, you can just use a flathead screwdriver. These pop out really easy. And you're going to see a hole here that we need to enlarge. Now, the reason we need to do that is we need to fit our hardware up inside of that hole. This hardware uh, measures an inch in width, both the bolt and the spacer. So the easiest way to do this is to use a step bit like this. Now, if you have um, a, like a burr bit or something like that at home, it'll work too. Um, these aren't really, really difficult to enlarge, but uh, the step bit will make quick work of it. Just check and make sure that works. Let's try the bolt. So that'll work for us. And we're going to need to do this on both sides. Once you have the hole drilled on both sides, you can take some clear coat or any really any color spray paint and just spray spray the bare metal. Uh, just to keep corrosion from forming. Now, while you're waiting for the paint to dry, you can take a bottle brush uh, like this. And what we want to do is just run this in and out of the factory bolt holes, the nut sets back here, just to make sure we get any dirt or if they have any weld splatter in there. The hardware that comes with the kit, we're going to be using these to bolt the hitch up. And it's a good idea to test it beforehand to make sure we're not going to run into any problems while we're holding the heavy hitch up here. This is something you definitely want to do on both sides. Now that the paint is dry, you can take the hardware in your kit. You're going to have a fish wire, a carriage bolt, and a spacer block. And we're going to fish these up into the hole that we enlarged up in the frame. So what we need to do is you'll hold the coil up. Take the spacer block and then thread the bolt on. And simply feed the bolt up, spacer block up, give it a shake and bring it down. Now we'll leave the wire attached right now and we'll feed that through the hitch as we raise it into position. Now go ahead and install that bolt and spacer on both sides. Now we'll leave the fish wire on for now and that'll help us keep the bolt in position as we raise the hitch up. Now you want to go ahead and install the bolt and spacer block on both sides. Now is a good time to reinstall the heat shields uh, because the next step is going to be raising the hitch into position. Now with the next set of hands we can raise the hitch into position you're going to want to feed your fish wire through the back hole. And you need to also tuck the hitch in between the bumper and the spare tire carrier. This is definitely going to be easier if you have help. to wiggle the hitch and get the two front bolts in on both sides and then we can remove the fish wire from the rear bolt that we installed and we can take the included flange nut and install it on the bolt. Now you'll see sometimes they're a little bit hard uh, to get started because they're moving. I'm going to take that pick again and go up. I'm going to just put some side pressure on that bolt to keep it from moving. And that'll help us get that threaded on. We'll go ahead and snug these up on both sides so we can torque them to the specs in our installation manual.
The flange nuts are three quarter inch and the smaller bolts that we used earlier are 13 millimeter. Now we can start torquing right now. What we're gonna do is we wanna start with the large flange nut on the bolt that we installed in the frame. We'll get this torqued to the specs that are in our installation manual. Now with that tight, we can pull the two metric eight fasteners out because that flange nut's holding the hitch up. And then these are going to hold up our exhaust hangers as well. So we're gonna raise the exhaust up get those bolts installed and get them torqued to the specs in our installation manual. Now with our hitch torqued down, we could take the plastic pan and let's mock it up here. We're gonna end up having to trim this um, and we can use the tin snips that we used earlier to cut this plastic, it's not very it's not very rigid, but um, I'm just placing the three studs on the back to kind of center this up and line it up. And I'm going to come, I'm just looking at the receiver portion back here, make a mark right here and right here. And we'll trim this with the snips. So I had to cut a little deeper on this back side to make it fit, but it does fit with just cutting this. The directions for some reason for, for some reason have us cutting the entire edge on both sides um, and it's just not necessary. So we can flip this up here. and then reinstall our fasteners along the front. Now the hitch and the bumper kind of contact right here and it does make it kind of difficult to line these holes up. So I'm using a Phillips screwdriver to kind of force this belly pan back a little bit. It does work for you, and I think it's better than trimming the bumper back here. Um, like I said, everything's nice and tight right now, but just by doing this, kind of sticking the screwdriver up in there and forcing that, that pan back, it's working just fine for us. Just hand tighten those center ones. And you can come up. snug up these 10 millimeters in the back. Now just the last steps are going to be to uh, reinstall the bolts for the rear muffler hangers here.
those tightened down, we could grab the center isolator and we'll reinstall this in the center of the exhaust. And we can remove our cam buckle tie down strap. And that's going to do it for the installation. And that was a look at Kurt's Class 1 receiver hitch on our 2023 Toyota Camry.